He loves to compose his own music. He is self-taught. He is the shining star. For 25-year-old Matthew Russian, the piano isn't just a passion. It's a safe place. Music, a way to help him process the world around him. Mom Laverne says her son was always a little different. At what point did you discover that he was uh, dealing with autism? It was in sixth grade when I found out. Yes, there was the quirkiness. Yes, he would want to be by himself sometimes, but he was so high functioning. He continuously had that ability to read and understand. His subtle autistic traits are at the center of the family's years-long fight to clear Matthew's name. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna cook this weekend for Ashley and I. After he caused a life-threatening multi-vehicle car crash in 2019. A tragedy made worse by what Laverne claims was the Virginia Beach Police Department's misinterpretation of Matthew's behavior as criminal. So you had no alcohol today, right? No, sir. She says that night in 2019 still upsets her son. Matthew was going to join us, but this became too much for him to talk about. Yes, it was a lot for him to, to handle. Autism is a neurological condition. In some cases, it impacts their cognitive abilities. Individuals may be nonverbal, or if they are verbal, they may be prone to repeat themselves. Oftentimes, individuals with autism also have sensory processing issues. They may not be able to withstand bright lights or loud sounds. Laverne is grateful her son is alive. The risks of deadly outcomes between law enforcement and black Americans well documented. Studies estimate blacks are two to three times more likely to be killed by police than whites. Having autism can escalate the situation. Many individuals with autism don't respond immediately to commands, so that may be seen as a form of noncompliance, when in actuality, it's that person with autism uh, not understanding those commands in the way that they are being spoken or shouted out by law enforcement agents. A 2016 study found around 20% of youth with autism had been stopped and questioned by police, and nearly 5% had been arrested by age 21. You're a black mom. Had you talked to him about possibly having an encounter with police? We had that talk with him of if you ever get pulled over, what to do? Put your hands, you know, on the steering wheel. You know, first identify himself as being autistic and or um, just complying and then saying, can I call my mom or can I call my dad? In January 2019, Matthew was driving in a parking lot when prosecutors say he struck another moving vehicle, fleeing the scene. They say he drove 65 miles an hour into oncoming traffic, hitting two other cars with passengers inside, and then, quote, stated he was trying to kill himself. Matthew exhibits what is called echolalia, repetitive speech of maybe something he heard or something that was said to him. A man was yelling at him, are you trying to kill yourself? So Matthew repeats that, kill myself, I was trying to kill my, you know. And so they took that narrative to prosecute him, to charge him. The Russians don't dispute that Matthew was at fault, but argue his actions that night were not intentional or criminal, as police reported. Laverne says her son was in the midst of a medical crisis caused by a traumatic brain injury sustained in a 2017 car accident. He had a focal seizure, blacked out, because all he saw was lights. You know, some people would, though, ask, why was he driving if he had these medical issues? We didn't understand the severity of, of seizures and how it could affect someone. If they had taken him to the hospital immediately, they would have known he was going through a medical episode. Matthew wasn't taken to the hospital that night. Instead, officers took him into custody for attempted murder. The driver in one of the vehicles Matthew hit, now 76-year-old George Cusick, was so badly injured he'll never walk, talk, or feed himself again. He requires 24-hour care in a nursing home. He did some serious damage to people that day. My heart goes out to them. Matthew wishes he could take that night back. 
In August 2019, Matthew pleaded guilty to three felony counts and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Laverne says the sentence was unfair and took to social media to tell Matthew's story. The posts going viral. I truly believe that in the petitions and the posts, just everything was brought out because he's a black autistic young man that was wrongfully prosecuted. In early 2021, after more than two years behind bars, Matthew was released, granted a conditional pardon by then Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. I was never gonna let him go again. Matthew is still considered a felon and under supervised probation. He's not allowed to drive or contact his victims and their families. The Russians are seeking a full exoneration, saying Matthew's criminal record makes it harder for him to get a job. You can't fault somebody for having a medical episode, just like you can't fault someone from having a heart attack behind the wheel. But the Cusick family is convinced Matthew intentionally crashed his car and strongly oppose any change to his status. His wife telling ABC News, Matthew Russian should not have been driving that night. He should never drive again. The parole restrictions must remain in place to protect him and the public. And the Virginia Beach Police Department also standing by their actions, saying all their officers have been trained to identify and respond to people with autism, expressing sympathy for all who were impacted by the events of this tragic day. Matthew didn't willfully cause that accident. My son is not a killer. Like Laverne, Iyun and Sylvester Osagier say they know all too well how it feels to have an autistic child be misunderstood by the police. Their 29-year-old son, Osaze, was shot and killed by an officer four years ago, his violent death a stark contrast to the devoutly religious gentle giant they loved. What was he like as a child growing up? Osaze was very, very quiet, gentle, always happy. He never once fought his siblings. And he was the peacemaker. He was the one that would try to make sure that they don't fight and that they get along very well. <laughs> his death so shocking it made headlines in the small town of State College, Pennsylvania. He was killed by State College police officers during a mental health check after he had lunged at them with a knife. I felt a shot right here. I felt a gun shot on my heart. The family saying local police knew their son. In addition to autism, he also had schizophrenia and sometimes needed extra support. They've had to take him to the hospital uh, when, whenever he felt like he was having a uh, breakdown. So uh, a number of them knew him quite well. What did you say to the police about how to deal with him or did you sense that they understood? We actually thought they understood uh, because they knew his situation. As a young adult, Osaze had been part of a residential program, living with some of his peers. He was in a structured environment. He related well with people. He liked a pattern of activities. He did not want to deviate from anything he was comfortable in. But, but as soon when as he, he was, was not in that structured environment, he, the, the level of discouragement and anxiety was overwhelming, and that's when he got off his medication, and his situation would just spiral. In early 2019, a big change. Osaze leaving the program and moving into an apartment with a roommate. Just months later, Sylvester received concerning texts and calls from his son. One message saying there would be trouble with the police in a little bit. Sylvester immediately rushing to his son. I wanted to be sure that he was safe and I wanted to be sure that, that, he, that he did not encounter somebody you were worried that he might hurt someone or hurt himself? Or hurt himself, yes. Finding Osaze's apartment empty, he frantically searched for him for hours, eventually calling police for help. But Osaze wasn't found. The next morning, Sylvester went back to the apartment to find police already there. What were you told? I knew something had happened because I saw many police vehicles and many TV, many uh, members of the press there as well. And um, eventually, they told me that they confronted him, that he uh, had a knife, and, uh, and, um, and they shot him. 
Police say someone called them after spotting Osaze at a nearby grocery store that morning. An officer who the family says didn't know their son was sent to the apartment. When Osaze opened the door, police say there was a tense confrontation because he had a knife in his hand. After trying unsuccessfully to subdue him, police responded with gunfire. Somebody could have called me to say, hey, come here, we need your assistance. But none of that was done. A lot went wrong. Just men with guns that show up to an autistic child's apartment and give him a million instructions. It shouldn't be this way. Did you ever, ever envision that you would lose your son this way? Not in a million years. Not in a million years. Two months later, the district attorney announced no charges would be filed, saying the shooting was justified. Everything around us and everything we have seen show that their own policies were not even followed. The Osagies have since filed a lawsuit claiming, in part, the police did not respond appropriately to someone with a known disability having a crisis and that they used excessive force. In response, State College called the incident a tragic situation for all involved and insisted the police have handled thousands of other mental health-related calls, including several with Asaze, with a number of these calls involving threats of violence and weapons, and none previously ended with a negative result and or the need to deploy deadly force. Do you think that maybe if he was not a black young man, they may have taken a little more caution? I made it very clear to them, personally that if that had been their son, at the other end of their gun, they wouldn't kill him. When people have mental health issues or they have autism, um, there's a way in which society can sort of put them on the margins and not realize that they're very important in this world. And it's only the people who love them, who know them, that really know that they have a place in this world. Coming up, you can't just serve and collect a check and go home. How one police officer is hoping small steps can lead to big change. We just look for different things in the packet that help guide the officer along the way. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.